All right, so now we're going to implement the delete products functionality we just created in Redux on the front end of our application. This is the finished product here. And if I click on this delete icon, watch what happens. So I'll click on it. And you see here that we get this pop-up notification that asks us if we really want to delete that product. So you can go ahead and either delete the product or cancel. If you cancel, nothing happens. If you click on delete, then that product will be deleted from the database. So for now, I'm just going to click on cancel. You've seen us delete a product before. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a package that will help us create that pop-up. Now in my React.js course, I did both. I used the package and I actually created that, you know, custom confirm box by myself with code. And I can tell you categorically that it's much easier to do it with a package. So, but I just want to let you know that you can actually build out stuff like that yourself. But is it really worth it? That's what you need to ask yourself. I mean, the time and all of that you put into building stuff every single item for your project so but for us today we're going to go to our npmjs.org so let's just go there and so i've already taken the liberty to search for this react confirm alert right so to install it let's just copy this guy here and then i'll just come and install it so i'll bring this up and then i have one editor here aha so now we can just paste in that command react confirm alert and then hit enter now while it's installing we'll just begin to set up some basics to use it so we're going to need to use it inside of our product list that's where we displayed all of our products so i'll just search for our product list page or component rather uh, so this is it and then let's just scroll down to where we have um okay now that i've looked for the product list page let's come back here because the first thing is we need to set up so i'll scroll down and you see here that we have some documentation about how to use the package they use a class-based um, function to explain the uh, um implic to explain how to use this plugin or this package so let's get started so first off let me just copy this um file here and then i'll just slot that in here like this i'll import it inside of my product list so product list is where we have the jsx and everything that shows the product so i'll slot it here like so then let me get rid of the comments like so and also this one aha now we're going to come here and if you look inside here you see that we have this submit function that is being called Hmm? this submit function ends here now me i don't want the submit function i want to give this function a separate name so i'll just copy the content of the function which is this confirm alert and this is where it ends hmm? i'll copy that confirm alert like so and then i'll come inside my own component so let's come down like this and after this shorting text i'll just come here and create a function that i'll call so arrow function And I'll call that function confirm delete. Because basically what I want the function to do is to confirm, is to throw an alert box to give the user an opportunity to confirm that they want to delete the product. So that's why I gave it that name. So I'll just paste in what I copied above. Now let's modify. But before we modify, I'll create another arrow function just above this guy. So if, and I wish Visual Studio Code can be fast. This one I'm going to call Dell products and it will be the function that will dispatch our Redux action to delete a product. So I didn't want it to have the same name as the Redux action. That's why I just shorten it here to Dell products. All right. So now confirm delete here. Yeah? So what are we going to do? We're going to modify. It says confirm delete here. Well, here I just want to say delete product. And then this one I want to say, are you sure? are you sure you want to delete product very long question so if the user clicks yes well i don't want it to be yes i want it to be delete what happens if the user click yes there's just this alert that is thrown to delete the product but we don't want this alert to be thrown. we want an actual function so this callback function here we're going to point it to this delete product so 
but when we want to delete a product we need to delete the product by its id so you see this confirm delete which is the first function i will call when the user clicks on that button so let me go back here so when the user clicks on this button the first function i'll call will be this confirm delete and i will send the id of this product here to this function so here i'll just have an id parameter aha then here i'll replace this with my delete delete products and then i'll just pass the id here so what if they don't want to delete the product suddenly they change their mind then you want to cancel the whole process so here i'll say cancel and then instead of throwing an alert i'll not do anything so just comment this one out and everything will still be fine so now we can now go to this icon where this icon is located and then we'll call this confirm delete function so that's what we'll do now so let me scroll down aha so you see we have the trash here so on this trash i will add an on click on click and i want it to point to so we're going to use an arrow function like so and then confirm delete then we'll pass it the underscore id which is part of the things we destructured from the pro, uh, the product yeah so we're passing in the underscore id which will serve as the id of the product great now we can now go up and execute the function that will actually delete the product so let's go up like so and this file is getting very big if i was going to refactor i would move a lot of things out so let's continue so now we want to delete the products but this delete product functionality remember is supposed to be asynchronous where is so we're going to come here and say async aha and then don't forget the id that we are getting from this one here okay great so now how do we want to delete this product we are going to call that function we created in redux and remember to call the function in to call the action in redux we have to dispatch it so that will need us to import use dispatch and the rest of them so i'll just come up here and then i'll just import use dispatch i don't know if i've imported it before i think i have okay i think i've imported it before so it's right here so we'll just dispatch it so i'll come here and then i'll just say tab await dispatch and what do i want to dispatch i want to dispatch the function to delete product delete product and you see here it's also it's also giving me the option to import it from features redux blah 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 so just go ahead and import this one and then i'll just pass it the id as well so by dispatching this function we're going to call the redux operation to delete this product when we delete this product however i want to refresh the page in other words i want to get the products from the database again so that one is very straightforward because we've done it before remember um the process of getting these products from the database we've already implemented that in one of the previous videos so i'll just duplicate this and then i'll just change this to get product so i'll just say get here and i don't know if we've imported it and uh, we're not getting product by id we're just calling it so let me try and auto import it uh -huh. so you see it's right there in redux so i'll auto import it again this is what we need to do to delete a product so i'm going to save this i don't think there's anything extra i need to do so now let's come and test after we test if there's anything we need to change we'll change it so i'll come here and then i'll open this guy up and click on this button aha so you see we get this delete product are you sure you want to delete products cancel nothing happens let me delete the first one or oh, no let me not delete the first one let me delete this one that has test so i'll delete this one and say delete aha so it says request filled with status code 404 Hmm. Request field with status code 404. That sounds like the server is not running. I'm not sure, but let's just troubleshoot. So to troubleshoot, the first thing I'll do is to actually confirm that this ID is legit. 
so i'll just come here and do a console.log of the final id that we get so console.log the id and then i'll just you know comment out all of these commands here so just want to console.log okay so let me save that and then i'll just come back here to oh, i have problems here why get products is defined but never use don't worry we we'll use them okay so terminal so i'll come here and then i'll just open my terminal my console rather aha so now let's try to delete a product so let's expand this guy aha so i'll try to delete this first product or the last product we added i'll click delete and then i'll click on delete so you see we are sure that we are getting the id of the product here because it's um stored here so what we need to be sure is let me just come back here and minimize this so we are just getting the id and then we are dispatching the delete product function okay let me save this file again and then let's try it out this time because i don't think except it's coming from the product services anyway let me just try it out first here so i'll click on trying to scroll here okay let me expand this guy and then i'll click on this button one more time and let's try to delete so request field is 404 and 404 simply means that that um item was not found so i guess there's something we're not doing right so i'll come here oh okay i know what the problem is i just the thing just came to me <laughs> so let's it's coming from our product service okay so in this our product service i think this is where the problem is so let's see so if you look at this function here where we delete this product you will notice that we just combined the api url plus the id but ideally what should happen is that in front of this api url which is this link here right it ends with product we should technically have a forward slash in the front of it so forward slash then the product id so i think that was what the problem was it was not we're not finding that resource in the server because of the absence of this forward slash so it was an oversight on my part from the very beginning and we've not gotten that error because there was no situation where we appended something to the url all right so now we fixed it and now we can go ahead and save and all things being equal we should be able to delete the product now so i'll come here let it compile and then i'm just going to delete maybe this phone for example or the electronics whatever just choose anyone and then i'll click on delete aha so you see it has deleted product deleted successfully and then we're also able to refresh the products such that that is taken out and we now have the updated products here if you check the categories so you see that it has changed to two and the out of stock has changed to zero because that product we deleted was the one we set as quantity to zero so that's about it for deleting a product and i hope you appreciate the fact that we uh, finding a way to debug stuff and correct stuff while we build so i hope it helps you build your debugging skills as well all right that's about it for this one i'll see you in the next one then